Hey, what's up and welcome to a new vlog about my game Volunteers. Alright, so in the last vlog I've shown that I was building a map editor plugin for Godot. The reason for it is quite simple, I couldn't find a tool that I was happy about to build my maps, so why not create my own? The thing is, it's never enough. I always want to add more stuff to it. Alright, let's get started then. There is one thing that a lot of games are doing and this is to change the footstep sounds depending on the texture the player is walking on. Obviously this is something I want to do in my game but I don't want to have to do it all the time so I want something to help me inside of the plugin itself. So what I did is that I exposed the function directly in the plugin to let me query the texture at a given point, for example the position of the player. This way I can easily select a different sound depending on what texture I'm on. Brilliant! Brilliant! Cool, so let's see the result. I like it, this is an easy solution and I'm gonna be able to reuse it in all of my projects. Obviously, you need to hear the sound of the other players as well. Nice. Nice! Awesome! One thing I was missing in my map editor was a way to paint several kind of packet scenes but all at once. So for example to create a forest here but with some variation in the trees. This helps a lot to create a rich environment and this is much easier to create it this way. I don't have to manually select which tree I'm gonna paint on the map, the tool will randomly choose one for me. That's awesome! Let's be honest, just walking in the forest like that with all the different trees is already really cool. Wow! Cool stuff! The next thing I wanted to add is snow, but not that kind of snow, because this one is pretty boring, it's only on texture on the ground, so no. Boring! I want to have snow that has some thickness that goes over the trees or over everything that is around, like this. That's exactly what I was looking for. So I added a way to paint big snow everywhere you want. The same thing as for the trees, I think this helps a lot to create a rich environment and this is pretty easy to use. You just pick the tool and paint the snow. You can even use the different brushes if you want to create some patch on the ground. I was thinking about this for a long time now, so I really wanted to give it a try. I think it looks awesome. So we have the boring snow on the ground which is only the texture, but we also have the thick snow that goes over the trees and even over the house. That's cool. Again, in my opinion here it helps a lot to create a rich environment. You could imagine for example a game that slows down the player when he goes in the thick snow. I think that works great. Okay, we are missing something though. If you ever played the Sons of the Forest, you might have noticed that when you walk in the snow, it creates a snow trail behind you that disappear after sometimes. I want that. Obviously, I'm not looking for the level of details that Sons of the Forest has, but I want to have something similar. Alright, so I added a way to push the snow down when you walk, and this is all driven by the plugin itself. The way it works is that the game communicates to the plugin where it wants to push the snow down, and after some time, the snow just gets back to its original position by itself. Alright, we have that, let's go crazy now. <laughs> Why don't we add ripple effect to the water we have in the plugin now? I mean, we already have the snow trail effect and walking in the water right now feels really boring. So why not add a ripple effect when you walk in the water? All right, let's see how it goes. Oh, that's perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. Look at this ripple. Wow. So now the plugin manage the water trail and also the snow trail just like that. I think it looks pretty. And by the way, the snow here is configurable so you can decide the thickness level you want. So for example, here I just have a small amount of snow. That's cool. Well, all of the snow gives me a bad idea. The Grinch got a wonderful Idea. At this point, why don't we use the snow to create some thick sand? I mean, there's not much of a difference. The only thing that differs really is the texture, right? 
I know, I know, it feels really wrong to choose the icon with the snowflake on the right, but hey, at the end, it paints sand. To be honest, I think this is really cool to create a desert map just like this. So you can have the sand texture on the ground, but like for the snow, this is pretty boring. But as soon as you add thick sand, oh boy, we're talking. That's way better already. Let's have a look at how it goes in the game. And we already have our ripple effect here. That's really cool. And we also have our sand texture on the ground, the boring one. And the thick sand here, look at that, we have the sand trail now I guess. Well, it was a bad idea, right? At least we have a new map. Speaking of which, I think we have all what we need to create the rest of the maps for today's video. I really wanted to have maps with different ambience and different environment. So let's create a snow one just like this one. What I really like about this one is how the fog creates some natural covers. So when you're gonna be in the fight with someone else, you're gonna have the option to disappear in the fog by going far from the fight. In my opinion, that's that makes this map interesting. All right, let's create the last map for today. For this one, I wanted to have a deep river at the bottom of the map. So you can go and visit this place, but you can also cross with the bridges I placed on both sides of the map. I think that makes it really fun and probably I risk I reward place on the bridges. I wanted this map to be like a fairy tale. I think that makes it. All right, the last thing I wanted to add in my game was a shooting range. We see that kind of stuff in a lot of games, for example, here in Valorant that usually helps you to get familiar with the weapons and also the game mechanic. So obviously, I want one. The way I did it on my side is when you are in the lobby, you can even start a matchmaking, but you can also join the shooting range while being the matchmaking. This is something I really wanted to have, the fact that you can find a match even while being in the shooting range. The goal here is to have something somewhat interesting to do while you wait for a game and also that helps you to just try out all the weapons and maybe play with your settings and stuff like that. So you have a quick look at how the game feels. Alright, very cool. So the next thing I did was to do a quick playtest with some of my friends. I really wanted them to see the improvements I did since the last time we played together. So we did some 3v3 games. Awesome, it was a lot of fun. Alright, let's talk now about the map editor plugin itself. Because you've been a lot on either Twitter or YouTube to ask me if the plugin was available somewhere. Which is awesome because it means that you were interested about what I was doing. The answer has always been that I'm gonna use it first in my game because I want to see what works and what doesn't. But afterwards, I plan on releasing it. You might wonder though, why it takes me so long to release it. Well, I can only do game dev in my spare time, so that's why. But don't worry, I'm gonna release a video when I'm gonna release the plugin itself. I'm gonna explain how it works and how to install it and everything. I just don't have a release state yet. Alright, that's all I had to show for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it and we're gonna see each other on the next one.